Get great deals on the latest phones, tablets, and business apps with O2 Business. You're watching BTX, I'm Basil, and this is a comparison between the Huawei Mate 8 and the HTC 10. The Mate 8 isn't quite a flagship, it's kind of one of those offshoots that ends up being better than a flagship in a lot of ways. It has a full HD, a six inch display, the most amazing screen to bezel ratio that I've seen on a device of this size before. A metal frame, really, really elegant design. Huawei superseded themselves with this thing, but how does it stack up to HTC's best phone so far? This has a front firing camera with image stabilization. It's got stereo speakers, one front firing, one bottom firing. It even ships with high res audio headphones. So yeah, two pretty sweet devices. Before I jump into that, subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. You'll be kept up to date with all of our upcoming videos. Right, back to these phones. I'm gonna talk you around each one individually because that's just gonna be easier because this thing is heavy and big and I need to be able to wield it appropriately. Down at the base, you've got a micro USB connector as well as a speaker. Right hand side, you've got volume rocker and a power button. Up at the top is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Left hand side of the phone is just that SD card slot while around the back is a camera with a dual tone flash and a fingerprint scanner. Fingerprint scanner works pretty pretty well and uh, it unlocks the phone from off but one thing this doesn't support are the wonderful gestures that we've come to expect from Honor devices and some Huawei devices as well as some Huawei P9, their new flagship. And jumping out of that we can see the HTC 10 is a much, much more manageable device in the hand. Not quite as elegant actually, it kind of looks like the Batmobile, but in hand it actually feels more elegant because it you can't quite make it out, but it has a really nice curve to the back that just makes it sit quite nicely, cupped by your hand. Front camera, like I said, has autofocus and image stabilization. That is a front speaker. Down at the base is a bottom firing speaker. So when you're playing games, if one is covered up, the other will work to full effect. The screen is 5.2 inches, Quad HD SLCD 5. Below the display is the fingerprint scanner, as well as capacitive buttons either side. Left-hand side, you've just got an SD card slot. The micro SD card slot supports adoptable storage, so you can expand the internal memory there. Right-hand side, you can see you've got volume rocker and power button and a nano SIM card slot. Around the back, that 12 megapixel camera, f1.8 lens, dual tone flash, laser autofocus. Available in a range of colors, both of these devices are metal, they're cold, they're stark, they look good, they're, they're mean business. The screens are very, very different. You've got full HD versus quad HD, but to be honest, I can't really make out pixels on this really large full HD display, which begs the question, do I really need quad HD? Uh, if I was watching a movie, I know I'd rather be watching it on this thing. So so Huawei may well have made the right decision right there, stripping back in an area that probably means that they can focus more on A screen quality and B other elements and keep the price down. This however is a true flagship, it plays the numbers game big time. And Quad HD resolution means you've got a pixel density of above 500 pixels per inch, so everything looks beautiful, nice and sharp. The SLCD 5 panel is not one we've seen before, so you're going to have to wait, watch this space before we test it out in too much detail. Very first impression, it's looks amazing head on. Off angle it has got a slight red hue to it. Inside you've got Emotion UI versus um, HTC's Sense with a kind of more streamlined experience. So you've only got one internet browser, Chrome. HTC hasn't even loaded on their own gallery. You've got photos on here. It's pretty, pretty cool what HTC's doing. They're really going in the Google direction if you're Sony fans of stock Android, you will definitely prefer this. Not least of all because it has an applications tray unlike the, HT, the Huawei um, Ascend Mate. 8 or the Ascend 8, Mate 8 even. You can see on the right hand side as I pull down you've got quick access to your settings um, and that's even that's much more stock than HTC settings of old. Pull down two tier notification tray, you've got optional blink feed to the left hand side but I have killed it. As far as Huawei's Emotion UI goes, a range of home screens you can pinch out to access an overview, you can pinch in to access your hidden applications, you can swipe down in there, you can access um, quick uh, kind of search, universal search through your phone book. No applications tray. The pull down notifications tray is different to that of stock Android. Instead, you have these two screens. Personally, prefer stock Android all the way. One thing that you can do with the uh, Mate 8 though is quickly access this one-handed mode, which is very handy for a device of this size. Internals are gonna be pretty different. Like I said, Snapdragon 8, 
20 processor, four gig of RAM in the HTC 10. Don't drop it. Um, and it's powerful. It's very powerful. Gaming should be an absolute breeze. But still, the Huawei uh, Mate 8 is still a plenty, plenty powerful device with a Kirin 950 processor. It comes in a couple of variants. You can opt for 32 gig internal memory or 64 gig. The 32 gig version will have three gig of RAM. The 64 gig will have four gig of RAM. We have the 32 gig version. We haven't really used it as a review device, so I'm not going to say um, whether or not the three gig of RAM struggles, but I highly doubt it would based on the fact it benchmarks very well and the experiences I've heard from other people who have used it have been nothing short of glowing. As far as the camera goes, it's really good that Huawei's also introduced manual or brought back a manual camera as introduced on the Mate S and the Huawei P8. Um, that you can also do things like jump into the settings so you can adjust your resolution, 16 megapixel by default, um, and that's versus 12 megapixel snapper on the HTC 10. Image stabilization, like I said, that HTC 10 seems to be performing pretty well in low light in manual mode. Haven't tested it too much in sheer automatic. Check back for our camera comparisons and reviews for that. Um, other internals, both of the devices have NFC, both have um, GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all that jazz, up to Cat6 LTE in the UK. Real point of differentiation is next up going to be battery life. 3000 milliamps versus 4000 milliamps. That echoed when I said it because it's just such a grand number. Um, that pretty much means you're not going to struggle to get a full day out of the Mate Eight. Um, no one we've spoken to who's using it has struggled. In fact, you can probably wangle two days out if you're even slightly conservative. Um, haven't got early impressions just yet with the HTC 10, though watch this space, they will be coming in the next couple of days. One thing the HTC can do is charge quickly, 50% in half an hour, as opposed to 38% in half an hour or something like that with the Mate 8. And so that's pretty much both of these in a sizable nutshell. If you've got any questions, if there's anything that I have left out, make sure you fire them in the comments section below. And if you like the video, click like, like the channel, subscribe. It's how you'll be staying on top of everything we do with these two slightly oversized, but both wonderful in their own right devices. Thanks for watching BTECT. Get great deals on the latest phones, tablets, and business apps with O2 Business.